Well, hello there, friends. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. What I'm going to be doing is introducing you to my website. Well, here we go. So I get hundreds and hundreds of comments about different questions ranging from A to Z. So I think that if you were to see my website, RudolphsUpholstery.com, that that would probably answer a lot of your questions. Uh, like, where am I located? I get hundreds of those. Where am I located? And I always tell them, well, I'm a proud resident of East Texas, right? Uh, among other things, a lot of other questions, how-to questions, that kind of thing. Or another thing is I get a lot of criticism. When people see my videos, they'll criticize something about my video. And what I'll write to them back is I'll say, please see RudolphSupolstery.com. You know, and you'll see 43 years of my work there, you know, hundreds of pictures. Uh, and and uh, you can see the, the type of quality of work that I've done in the past. You know, and after that, I usually never hear back from them again. They can go figure. Just do it. Do it now. Hit that like button. So we'll go ahead and start here at the very beginning on the homepage. So basically what you're going to see is my phone and my address. But you know what? Don't call my phone um, because if it's from another state other than Texas, to tell you the truth, I don't answer it. If I did, I would never get any work done because I get calls all day long from everywhere across the country. But you know what? I need to work and make videos like this, and that takes time. So anyway. This is where I'm located. I have different categories here. We have truck seats. That way you can see all the truck seats that I've done. You can see boat cushions. I do a lot of boats and boat work because I'm 15 minutes away from Texas' second largest lake. I do aircraft. Done a lot of aircraft over the years. Here's some of those pictures. Motorcycle seats are another big one. And hundreds of motorcycle seats over the years. So you can see that there. Convertible convertible tops. Been doing convertible tops for all these years. 40 plus years I've been doing convertible tops. So what you're going to see on this website is hundreds of pictures of my work. But you know what? I didn't take pictures of everything that I did, you know, and all of the work that you see here, I did everything myself without help. I never had anybody work for me. So here in the more section, you're going to see a lot, lot more. So I really had to categorize my pictures because I have so many. So I really had to put 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, 2010s, and 2020s. So that's where you're going to see a lot of this work. So let's take, um, mm, let's focus here uh, next few minutes on my Rudolph's Virtual Museum. So what this is, it's really a biography. It pretty much tells my story. So, you know, my dad was a 50s hot rodder. Uh, this is the introduction for my virtual museum. Okay. When I was 10 years old is when I really started working on, on vehicles. So by the time I was 11 years old, I was painting all my neighbor's um, cars up and down the street in my mother's driveway. So here describes... Um, how I was doing the lowered Volkswagens in the early 1980s before they were really a thing. Lowered custom VW bugs. Okay, after that, I was doing uh, Auto Neon in the early uh, in the, my early 20s in the late 1980s, which is seen over the world today. So a lot of people, they everywhere you go now. I was even in China once, and I saw. Um, underglow, they call it now, underglow underneath vehicles. So you see the um, LEDs lighting up the underside of a car or other places of the car now. 
um, back in 1984 is when me and another fella, uh, his name was Craig Smith in Tempe, Arizona, we started putting auto neon on vehicles. And then it was actually, it's this picture right here. My mini truck showed up in a magazine that showed the auto neon. And after that magazine came out, everybody and their grandma came out with auto neon. Even AutoZone was selling it. And now you see it everywhere. But you know what? Um, me and Craig, we were the originators way back then. Almost, what is that? How many years ago was that? 1984. We're in 2023. Right now, so ah, it's an awful long time. So anyway, after that was the convertible mini trucks, as, as you just saw there. After that, I did the lower Japanese and European custom cars in 1984 before they were a thing. Okay, then my life changed in 20, 2006. After doing upholstery, I wanted to do something different. So I opened up a factory in all places. You know, everybody's heard of Wuhan, China now. But when I came back from China after a couple of years, people would ask me, well, where did you live in China? I'd say Wuhan, you know, sixth largest city in China, Wuhan. Nobody ever heard of it, but now everybody knows, right? I was at the 709th Institute in Wuhan. So I took my aircraft designs with me and I opened up a factory. Uh, so I produced my own product and came back a couple years later you know, with my product. But then I came back to a really bad economy in 2009. So I was thinking to myself, well, what was I doing when I was making the most money? I was doing auto upholstery. So anyway, I got back into auto upholstery and then the rest is history. So this is my museum. These are my aircraft designs right here. This here is one of my latest projects, another creation. Started out as a 53 oval window Volkswagen Bug. And then a lot of people have seen the world's only Liberty Walk um, Chrysler Crossfire. Okay, it's a boat that I did. Some stuff here from way back in my past. This is an auto show that I put a bicycle in in 1975 right here. It was this bike. This one right here. I was a little kid. So anyway, back in the 70s when vans were a thing, uh, this is what we did. I did this paint job right here. Uh, did uh, I didn't do the paint job, but I did do the, the mural on the side, airbrush mural. But we did assist with paint and design. So that's me as a kid right there. I must have been about 12 or 13 years old at that time. I made guitars, of course, did that kind of thing. Here's the bug stuff before lowered bugs were a thing. So I was doing painting graphics and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of what that came out like. So anyway, I bought an old Triumph TR6, restored that, and that's what that looked like. Okay, this is another one of my creations. It's a 71 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia convertible. And when I took a bunch of parts off of this uh, Porsche 911 Turbo right here, and I um, grafted them onto this Carmen Ghia with leather interior, of course. And that's that one. So, is that crazy? Here's the mini truck stuff in the early 80s. So, I don't know if anybody remembers, but there was Hot Tops in Tempe, Arizona. And we used to do the convertible mini trucks. Anyway, I designed the soft top for them. And there's another good example right here, my Auto Neon. Right there in the back tailgate of my truck way back then. So anyway, this happens to be the same truck. I just painted it yellow later. Did a custom interior, of course. That's what the neon there looks like. Lit up. So anyway, I made both a soft top, and, or a short top and long top for that truck. Put the Corvette wheels, all that kind of stuff. 16-inch wheels at the time was you know, crazy because nobody had 16-inch wheels. Um, so anyway, the car got totaled out, got in a car accident. So I went to the junkyard. I bought this little Nissan here, fixed it up. That's what it looked like when I was done with it, that red car right there. Okay, so the, um, after I totaled out the Mazda truck, I found this Vista, Dodge Colt Vista, right here in the junkyard. So I went in and I picked that one up. 
And this is what I did to it. You can see the progress pictures here. Did a bunch of fiberglass work to it, cut off the roof, of course. Did the paint, and that's what it looked like afterwards. So I had both the short top and the long top, and you can see here's a good picture of my body work. You know, I did all the work myself without help. And then in here you'll see later on I, I picked up this Mazda 626. This is like 1986 maybe. Okay, so I lowered it and did the 16-inch wheels on it and the air, the air dam and all that stuff. So you can see the, the theme going here, right? I got into classic cars. This was my 66 Ford Thunderbird 428. Man, that was a beautiful car. I wish I still had that. This is a car here I, I restored for my mother, 66 Cadillac Coupe de Ville, right there. And I went through about 100 cars myself during this period. I was buying and selling and enjoying these old cars. So this here was one of my special cars right here. It's one of 400 built, 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brome. And look at that young guy right there. This is at Bear Jackson Auction in 1995. And that's when I sold that. Um, of course, you know, you always regret when you sell something because later on it just becomes a memory. This is the interior that I did. It, actually, the car was one of, um, it was one of eight cars built. that had what was called a blue Mojave cloth with the lamb's wool carpeting. So I restored it back to original. Here's my Chrysler 300. 1955 Chrysler 300. I love that car too. 331 Hemi. Got some old Buicks, convertible. All oh, this is my Roadmaster right here. Two door Roadmaster hardtop. Love that car. Had 14,000 original miles on it. Oh, I really do miss that car. Here's my daughter. She's in her 30s now. That's when she was young, helping me out with that. So, another one of my big achievements right here is my 48 Packard custom made convertible supercharged Roadster. Rumble Seat Roadster. That's a progress photo, but this is really what it ended up turning out on my website. You'll see a lot more pictures of that car. And her 1950 Schwinn Black Phantom. And if anybody knows about old Schwinns, you know what that is. I had a 1942 Western Flyer bicycle. And this here is when I was in China. So we're in China, we're manufacturing. These are plugs right here for my fiberglass molds, which ended up being the model airplane right here. Vertigo Aircraft Development was my name brand. So you can see here how we were doing the fiberglass work, making molds from plugs. And lastly, Right here, oh, this is a Jaguar I picked up. I picked up an old Jaguar XJR Supercharged. I did a little bit of custom job on that because I wanted to do these seats. So these are the seats that I did for that car. I ended up selling that at an auction. It was a nice car. So that's what that is. And then, Big Vintage Bicycle. So Big Vintage Bicycle is my name brand. And there's still a Facebook page uh, for Big Vintage Bicycles. If you go on there, you'll see my six different designs. As you can see here, I even had one that looked like a 1915 Harley Davidson motorcycle. And some were dual electric like this. Some were single electric like this one. Some were gas powered like this one. But they were all eight feet long. They were big, huge bicycles. You know, that's always been the curse of my life. I've been a designer all my life. And that's always been the curse. Is if I wanted something and it didn't exist, that means I had to make it. Oh, here's another one I made. This is a replica of a 1915 Harley Davidson motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Volkswagen. That's what the Volkswagen started out as right there. You see if that pops up. That's the Volkswagen. Had a 71 body on it. So I took that off and put the 53. But I used the 71 chassis. 
And that's what it ended up turning into after around my Frankenstein job. Really built that body. And then a lot of people, they know about the cross, Chrysler Crossfire. So I still have that vehicle. So there's a, oh, we were, earlier we were talking about underglow, right? So anyway, that's what it is. And so if you didn't know what that was, that's what it is. And you've probably seen that around. So I had the neon heritage, so I put the neon in the headlights. And, you know, here's people just amazed at the neon in the headlight right there. So I kind of like this video right here. This is so cool. I had fun, a lot of fun with that Chrysler. And away I go. So this is in Phoenix, Arizona. Everybody usually travels about 80, 85 miles an hour on the freeways. So if they're going 85, how fast was I going? Just getting on, and I haven't even got on the freeway yet. I was still on the on-ramp. Anyway, that was fun. So this is just some of my other stuff. Oh, there, there's the um, Honda Element, so another creation. I wanted a, a something that I could build because we used to like to really go camping out in the deserts. So there we are. I built that car. So there was really, um, there's a big hole in the roof that we could stand up inside, which was really nice for changing clothes. But on top here was a one-man tent on top of that. So that's what it looked like when I first bought it right there. Mm -hmm. Still got the dealer sticker on it. And then, of course, my old boat, my 1957 Crestliner I restored. The aluminum boat. And that's what it looked like right there when I first bought it. So there, my friends, that's only one section. That's the Rudolph's Virtual Museum. So what you can also do is you can see the latest work, examples of my latest work, right there. And you can see in the 1970s. What was I doing in the 1970s? Oh, yeah. I was doing all that kind of stuff. Got a Pantera right there that we were restoring. Got a custom uh, Camaro there. I was doing these convertible tops, and I was doing vinyl tops on new dealer cars. Mm -hmm. So there's the auto neon. You can see it right there underneath that truck. That's what I was doing back then. Doing some custom interiors, and that was the style back then. Don't laugh. These are my seat designs. I was also manufacturing sports seats. So that's what all these are right here. Getty was my name brand back then. So did a whole bunch of that kind of stuff. And then early 90s was the mini trucks. And they were really popular back then. So I was doing these convertible mini trucks. Just like that. We, and I was doing a bunch of these uh, small import cars. Did a full-size Chevy truck. I did the, um, this here was my design right there for a slider. Sliding roof. Simulated convertible tops everywhere. Everybody loved those. Real convertible tops like that BMW. Mm-hmm.
So after that, I got into the classic car stuff. Here you're going to see Duesenberg's one of a kinds right here, like this 54 Plymouth Explorer. There's an Auburn 12 cylinder right there, coupe, convertible coupe. Got a lot of these special cars down here that I did. Packards, Oldsmobiles, Thunderbirds, Packard Caribbean, Packard Hug. Forty eight Packard Convertible, fifty three Buick Skylarks. 60, 60, model 62 Cadillac convertible right there. It's a, like 1948. And there's another one right there. Old Packards, old Buicks. Look at that Packard 120 I did right there. And that was a really nice car leather interior at the top. Now, uh, these go way back. I did like 40 cars for, um, he's a writer, Clive Cussler. He wrote, he wrote adventure novels. So he had a huge car collection in Arvada, Colorado. I did about 40 of his cars. So all of his cars are like million dollars, million dollars, million dollars. The really nice 32 Chrysler Imperial CH that I did. It had absolutely nothing in it when I started. So we got 2000s, look at that. It's a Cordell 29, I love that car. Early 2010s, what did I do here? You know, there's not a whole lot of pictures during that time because a lot of pictures disappeared in the divorce. So here's a 54 Corvette. Anybody that knows those cars, they will know what that is. I did a whole bunch of other little stuff, little Porsche right there. I was, I was even doing uh, patio furniture. Can you believe that? RV stuff. Mm -hmm. Limousine. Aircraft. Did a barber chair right there. Mm -hmm. and that's a 1950 Volkswagen split window. Did that. Can you imagine? I look at all these pictures and I think to myself, how could I have done all that work myself? 57 T-Bird. Okay, some custom stuff right here. This is some pretty crazy stuff. Did all this kind of interior work back then. Eagle Auto Interior was my name brand. A lot of that custom stuff. Street rod. Convertible tops. There's a Stutz Blackhawk. Maybe people never even heard of one of those.
A lot of convertible tops. Got a Viper. Got a Corvette boat. I did. A lot of custom seats. Convertibles and more convertibles, RVs. Jaguar, Porsche, Range Rover. Mercedes, Mercedes, those are Viper seats there. A lot of truck seats, a lot of other custom stuff. Motorcycles, more and more motorcycles. A lot of Chevy C10 stuff. Another 66 T-Bird convertible right there. More Porsche stuff, that's in 2000. Mazda Miata, Jaguar, Mustang, Volkswagen, Mercedes, Corvette. Mention your favorite in the comments. Porsche, Mercedes, Jeep. I did this Jeep top right here, custom Jeep top to fit over this guy's giant roll bar cage. So, I hope you enjoyed this. The next time, we'll see ya.